Want to see a funnel? There you go. What? What? Straight pirouette. YouTube, how are we doing today? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're checking out the Sky Viper V2400 FPV. This is the follow-up to the V950 STR streaming drone. And this one's very exciting, has some features packed into it, a lot of tech packed into this one, and it has a wide-angle lens on it. So, a lot of exciting things on this one. Let's check it out. So speaking of the V950 STR, I have it right here. So you get a little comparison. Basically the same size, but this one is a little sleeker, a little less beef to the body. And the gears are kind of underneath on this one. And on the 2400, they are more on the top. Very similar in size. This one has like landing legs, but this one does not. And this one does have an adjustable camera on the V950 STR, but the 2400 has a fixed wide angle lens. Now I definitely like the fact that it has the wide angle lens, but it is fixed at a somewhat downward angle. And you do get quite a bit of picture in there because it is such a wide angle lens, but I wish it was adjustable. I don't see a way of adjusting it so fairly certain that's fixed so you know not a deal breaker but I would have liked to have seen a adjustable camera so also I have over here is the the s670 stunt drone so with the 2400 here you basically took these two quads and kind of combined them into a hybrid camera quad that's actually very agile and can do a lot of stunts so it's almost like these two quads here from the previous generation of sky viper drones were kind of combined and this is what you get right here the v2400 fpv the transmitter will look very similar it has a cell phone holder that is adjustable but you're only basically going to be able to fit a cell phone in there not a tablet or anything like that it has your power switch here and your three rates this one also is loaded with auto features so it has an auto launch and an auto land and your altitude hold buttons so basically if you push one of these it's going to raise the quad up by about a foot every time you push the button or lower it by about a foot so this works okay We'll check it out in the flight video. And on the top here, you have your familiar stunt button, video button, and photo button. And then the rest of the ones on here are trim buttons. If we go back to the quad here, it does have a removable battery. And this is kind of like a flexible little plastic thing and you kind of pick up on it and the battery comes out and they have their own branded batteries. And these are available in Walmart and Target and places like this, as well as the drone itself. This is picked up I picked this one up at Target and I assume it's gonna be available at Toys R Us and Target and places like that and you could also pick up these replacement batteries which are 3.7 volts 650 milliamp hour lipo batteries they are branded as the Sky Viper and very thin so cut down on the weight a little bit with the battery here and definitely a plus that you're able to get replacement batteries because that was one of the knocks on the previous generation of Sky Viper drones you had a hard time finding replacement batteries and replacement parts for these so it looks like they're gonna offer support for that also on the box it says these quads are more of a modular design so you're gonna be able to get replacement parts and in theory replace anything that's broken fairly easily not sure exactly in practice how that's going to work but we'll see also let's take a look at the back of the box here this is offering flight assist options for auto launch auto land and auto hover and like i said on the controller there's buttons for those and we'll go over that in the flight review also this viper flight they're advertising this is an enhanced version of clean flight for anyone who's familiar with 
racing drones, you'll be familiar with clean flight, and this is sort of using like a hybrid version of clean flight apparently, and it touts that it makes them incredibly stable, fast, and easy to control. So that's definitely interesting, and as I said before, it has somewhat of a modular design, so you should be able to get replacement parts easily. And it's worth mentioning the 120 degree wide angle lens. In previous flights, this lens is excellent and definitely a big plus. I just wish it was a little more adjustable. The angle is not the best, a downward angle. So it is what it is, but it's definitely an improvement over the narrow lens that reduces the jello wobble and gives you more of a field of view. I just wish it was a little more adjustable. So you're gonna to wanna to link this to your smartphone, obviously, and to do that, we're gonna plug in our battery first, and I'm gonna use the box down here as my little launch pad because the grass here is quite long. So we got power to the quad, and we're gonna turn on our transmitter here, and it's gonna search for a sync with the quadcopter, and it'll give you a little audible, there it is, I don't know if you heard that, it was kinda of quiet. A little bit of a chime when it connects. So it should be connected and then we also have a message on our phone that it is connected. And so here we are in our app and brand new app from the previous version. You have your media gallery, live video feed, flight activity, and manual controls. I think that's only if you have like a Wi-Fi. It kind of gives you videos over here on this last tab that's kind of grayed out over here. It gives you tutorials and stuff like that, access to their YouTube channel. So let's go into our live feed and it's gonna, you're gonna get your connecting thing and I do have an SD card inside the quad here. You can record to your phone or onto an SD card and I think that's a huge plus for this one. It was one of the knocks on the previous version. You couldn't record to anything other than your phone and it was kind of a low quality signal. So definitely a plus that you can record to your phone now and record to a, an internal SD card. It's going to give you a higher resolution on the internal SD card. Unfortunately, it does not come with an SD card or a card reader for that matter, but if you didn't come with an SD card, I wouldn't expect it to come with a card reader. So I wish they would have included that, but it is what it is. So if we take a quick look at our app here, you have like a Wi-Fi sim sig a Wi-Fi button on the top, which doesn't really do anything. You have a clock that is going to tell you how long you've been flying, and also a video camera icon with a clock also that will tell you how you've, long you've been recording, and a picture icon with numbers next to it to tell you how many pictures you've taken in your flight. Also tells you if you have an SD card in here that it is a 16 gigabyte SD card actually and it is 96% free and battery to your quadcopter is 100% so this one has some sort of telemetry on it which is really cool um, not necessarily it doesn't necessarily work 100% of the time but it's cool that it at least you know is giving you the option and trying to make telemetry available to you so you have an idea of how much battery you have left but in practice I found that it's not hundred percent accurate and on the side you have pretty standard buttons the play button is going to bring you to your gallery uh, the red record button is a video record button and the picture icon is for pictures and I believe this button here is like a VR type of if you have some sort of VR goggles or something I don't know I'm not exactly sure what that one's doing I think it's, it's for like a FPV experience, although I wouldn't necessarily recommend flying this one FPV. So when you have the SD card inside, you're not gonna be able to record to the phone. It's either to the phone or to the SD card. So we have the SD card in here, so you hit the button and it's gonna start recording and you get your little indicator up here and also this controller kind of beeps at you quite a bit and I'm not always sure exactly what it is. So let's take it in the air and we'll do an auto launch here. And this is gonna bring it off the ground for you. I think I've lost sync to my, I think that's what it was telling me. Let's see if it links back up. 
think maybe we're connected here. Let's try it. So let's try an auto launch. There we go. And it goes up. And it's gonna basically hold its altitude here. And you're not gonna have to worry about throttle. Now, the one thing I've found is obviously this barometer inside the quadcopter for the altitude hold is affected by wind and changes in air pressure. So you see it's losing altitude there and it's a little bit windy out so wind tends to confuse the barometer in this one. So definitely something to be aware of, kind of more of a feature for a calm day. But as you can see it works very well so let's hit the lower button and it should lower it slightly and it's drifting with the wind. Let's bring it back. And if you wanted to go into manual functions, it says to have your stick down, hit the stunt button, and then hit the auto launch button. And then when you give it input on the stick, you're gonna be in manual mode. So for those of you that wanna fly this around like a normal quadcopter and not take advantage of the altitude hold, that's how you get it out of it. And for this one, this I'm, we're in the third right here and it is very responsive, very quick. See the funnel there? So like I said earlier, it's almost like they combined the stunt drone S670 with the V950 STR and they made this kind of hybrid, really advanced quadcopter. Does excellent flips. Let's show you some maybe. Let's bring it back here. And we'll hit the stunt button, and we're not flipping. What's that all about? Let's see. Let's see if we can get it to flip. Flip is not working. Let's land it and see what's going on there. This is a first for me. I've never had this problem with this particular quad. So let's land it and let's try another auto launch. So it's going to bring it up and hit the button and it's going to give you kind of like a hover. So I can't, I have no control over the altitude with the stick anymore. And so let's bring the stick down and hit the stun button and go to manual mode. So now we're in manual mode again. Let's see if we can flip now. There we go. Not sure exactly what that was all about. I have found that this one does have a few bugs here and there and a few times it's just kind of just dropped out of the sky on me. But it does flip very well. It is a little bit of a breeze today so maybe not the best flip demonstration because it's just enough wind to kind of impede it a little bit but I really like the way this one flies. Just like all the other Sky Viper quadcopters, this one flies very nice and very smooth, responsive. Not sure exactly what the advertised range of this one is. I find that when you go up pretty high, you can, it does get a little laggy to respond. And speaking of lag, you get a little bit of lag on your Wi-Fi FPV, but really the, the screen doesn't cut out very much. At least that's been my experience so far. But I really like the way this one flies. It flies real smooth and you get a nice long flight time out of it. I've been getting about seven and a half minutes out of this one. And inside the app, I'll show you later, once your flight is over, it kind of takes you to like a flight record. And it's gonna tell you, you know, your flight time, your height, and a few other bits of information about your flight. So that's really cool. I'm definitely liking that. I think that's only available on this one, the V2400, and the new Pro Series one that they got coming out. Hoping I get to check that one out. That one looks really cool. So this one also does the barrel rolls. So why don't we try that? We'll bring it out this way and come back and give it some forward pitch and barrel roll. Lost quite a bit of altitude. Recommend doing those higher than I was there. Let's try it there. See there, it did it pretty well. 
So it does a good job with the barrel rolls and this one is very acrobatic. It's kind of a everything quadcopter. It's very acrobatic. You get a nice picture. Not sure if you can see my phone right now, but I am recording the screen. I can see it here during the day, but I don't think it's gonna come out on camera. But this one does fly excellent. And I've really had a good time flying this one around. I did have issues when I first started flying it, but it was mostly because I wasn't reading the manual. And I'm not a huge manual guy, as most of the fans of this channel will know. But with this one, I definitely recommend reading the manual and seeing how to work all the auto functions and things like that. Because this one starts out in auto launch mode and you have to do the stunt button and auto launch buttons to unlock the manual mode. So that was really what was confusing me. Look at that funnel. This one funnels great. Getting just a little bit of drift from the wind but and pirouette. So this is the third rate and the yaw does change. Let's just go to the second rate real quick and here's your pirouette on the second rate. So the yaw slows down just a little bit on the second rate and let's see if we can demonstrate a, a funnel here. Still does a decent funnel on the second rate and let's go to our first rate here and then it's going to slow down exponentially on this first rate. Let's give you a yaw demonstration. Yaw is much slower on this first rate. So I don't even know if you can really, I wouldn't even call it a funnel on this first rate. I guess a little bit. Let's go back to three. I like to fly it around in this high rate. And it looks really cool in the air and it has the very distinct sound that all the Sky Viper drones seem to have. I like the way these, these ones sound. Sounds really cool. Getting blown around a little bit by the wind. It does have the green and red LEDs, green in the front, red in the back. They're underneath and they are pretty hard to see in the daylight. I have not flown this one at night. Wouldn't recommend this as a night flyer, but I'm sure you could probably do it, but I wouldn't recommend it because it's going to be very hard to see those LEDs. Let's check our flight time here. We've been going for seven minutes and nine seconds, so we're probably right, right near the end of our battery. Let's check for LVC. Or maybe I should do a auto land. I have not demonstrated that yet. So let's put this back in altitude hold, and I'm just hitting that button there. And then if I hit the auto land button, it's gonna land itself. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend you land in this grass like that. And I think we just hit LVC actually. So that's interesting. Perfect timing, I suppose. So we had about a seven and a half minute flight according to our telemetry on here. And that's pretty par for the course. I've been getting seven and a half minutes out of this one pretty consistently. My first flight was only like five minutes and some change, but I honestly don't think it recorded the entire flight I think I landed it a few times and it doesn't really show up in the flight log so I'm thinking seven minutes is a pretty good seven minutes and seven and a half minutes is a, is pretty standard flight time for this one so there you have it flight video of the Sky Viper V2400 FPV streaming drone and this one does stream to your smart device at 720p at 20 frames per second, which is a little bit slower than you're used to seeing in movies and TV. So might get a little bit of laggy lookingness to it and the motion may not look great, but it is more meant for previewing what you're shooting with the camera. I wouldn't call this one a straight up FPV flyer. It'd be pretty tough to fly this one with goggles or something like that because of the low downward angle of the camera but I do like that it is a wide angle lens and the quality of the video is much better than previous versions of the Sky Viper quads and it also has eliminated the jello wobble that was more prevalent in the V950 HD than the V950 STR but you know 
this one does record to the SD card like the V950 HD, so very similar in that regard. And I really like the fact that they included the option to record to an SD card and not just your phone. It gives you a much better image quality when you record to the SD card. So hats off to Sky Viper on that. Really enjoy this one. Probably gonna come back with some more videos with this one, but I wanted to give you guys a preview of the V2400. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. And if you have any questions about this one or anything at all, hit me up in the comments below. Stay subscribed, and until the next video, happy flying and try not to crash and burn. Okay. Not sure why that happened, but that's interesting.